So about a month ago, I posted this poll on Instagram asking if I should recreate this fifth element look or this Valentino dress, and the results were 50-50. You already made this one. Oh, okay, well, I guess that answers that. So you should make the fifth element cosplay now. Okay, I will. Before filming this intro, I was ironing the dress and I burned a hole in it. Yep, I burned a hole in the dress. Anyways, it was time to get fabric and of course I went to fit him. Where, looking back at it, I think I should have gotten this one, but I didn't. And instead, <laughs> this is the fabric that I got at the scholarship store. It was $5 a yard, maybe three, two, and I got three yards, so this was $6. The best thing about this, or the worst thing, is that it is knit, so we'll see how that works out. I originally started this project and put it down about four months ago, and you can tell by how short my hair is here because now my hair is this long. Just kidding, it's to my shoulders now. Maybe, no, to my collarbone. My initial thought was that draping it was going to be the easiest option for this top, but after going through that whole process for the front, I realized that I was wrong and it came out pretty wonky. So using a basic block that you already know that you like and a good boob-sized mug is going to actually be the best option. Here you can see how much better it looks. Create facings for the holes in the bodice by tracing your mug again, then drawing a line out from the one that you just traced, then cut two out of muslin. Sew the inner circles of the facings to the holes in the shirt. Trim the excess seam allowance, give them a good press, and turn those edges towards the wrong side of the fabric. And if you want a Regina George cosplay, you can just stop here, but I'm going to keep going. So, the front of the top is pretty much done. I do have to create the little boob part, but I'm gonna save that for last once the whole thing is kind of constructed a little bit better. And now I'm gonna do the back and the sleeves and the collar, then the boobs. <sighs> because the back of the top doesn't have any style lines or adjustments that need to be made, I'm just going to leave it as is. And the same thing goes for the sleeve. Everything here looks like it should. It's the exact length that I need. So I'm just going to add seam allowance and move on. So all together, I have my sleeve, my back bodice, and my front bodice, all ready to be cut out of muslin, sewn up, and ironed, which should be easy, but on days that are over 90 degrees, my iron and my AC do not want to work together, and I have to go downstairs and reset the circuit breaker every time I iron. So this is what we have right now. I think that the back looks pretty good and the sleeve. This is what it looks like on. And I want to start on the collar. <laughs> So you may be wondering why I didn't choose to make one of Lulu's costumes and the answer to that is because I did attempt to make the classic bandage dress for Halloween because my hair was a pinkish orange at the time but I didn't want to do that for this video because I don't want to be naked on the internet or worse, demonetized. I'm just kidding, I'm not even monetized on here. For the skirt, I went in with some draping tape and marked out all of my outlines that I needed, then filled them out with muslin and put the pattern onto paper, giving me a center front piece, a front side piece, a back side piece, and a center back piece. Okay, so because I have a stretchy knit for the final fabric, I want to use something stretchy for the sample, so I'm not going to use muslin, I'm going to use this like thick felt that I got from Joann's. Am I the only one that recently realized that it's Joann and not Joann's? I don't think that I'll ever be able to call it Joann. I, it's always gonna be Joann's to me. Once I have the sample of the skirt sewn up, I think that I'm pretty happy with it and I just decide life is too short, it's time to move on, no more samples. Just cut the skirt out of your final fabric, just do it. All one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight skirt pieces. Then pin them all together so you can sew them up. Once the skirt is all sewn up, I can get the green screen from my roommate and water my dirt. <coughs> all right, so the skirt, this is what it looks like. I have to hem it up. I still have to iron out these flat, but I think that it's gonna be a little less bumpy when I do. And I'm also going to make a facing for the top of the skirt, because I think that that's going to be the cleanest way. Next, I'm going to sew up the top, and that is where we're at. 
my baby. Also, just to jump back really quick, I am watering dirt, but there are seeds in that dirt. I also have my little jalapeno babies and my tomatoes that are actually coming in already. Isn't it so little and adorable? Once I have the facing on the skirt, I'm ready to start on the top and look at how nice and clean the edge on this boob cutout is. It makes me so happy. And you can tell that it's genuine because I got my little one tooth smile. Once I had the front and the back of the top sewn together, I could sew on the sleeves and start on the boob cups. For the cups, I decided that I wanted to just put draping tape directly onto them and make the pattern that way. Also just want to note that it is completely unnecessary for me to put this pattern onto paper because I'll probably never make this costume again, but I like having the option. Once I have the pattern on paper and I've added all of my seam allowances, I can cut it out of my final fabric. Then once I have my final fabric version all sewn up, I sew it onto the bust cup through the style lines using a stitch in the ditch. So I stitched the boob cups in place into the boob padding and I tried stitching down all of the edges, but I just hated the way that it looked. So I'm going to super glue the back onto it or glue gun, not super glue, glue gun. I haven't used a glue gun on a project in so long. And ooh, I let me tell you, it is so much fun and so quick and easy. I don't know why I stopped using glue guns, but I love them. Once I had all the edges glued down, I decided to go in with another piece of fabric and cover all of the empty boob cup and raw edges that were still there. Then all I had to do was sew them into place. So I am almost done, which means I'm at the point in the project where I hate it and I wish I never did this. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I just start to hate everything that I'm working on at a certain point in the project and regret that I did it and second guess everything about myself. But. I have come too far to give up now, and nothing is perfect, and I have to keep reminding myself that. Nothing is perfect, okay, everybody? For the hat, I cut out a rectangle the width of my head and then made a circle that would fit into that rectangle. And I did end up shorting it because the first attempt was a little too long, but once I did, it fit perfect. Now, the wings were the tricky part. I really didn't know how I was going to make these. So the first thing that I did was go into Adobe Illustrator and make the outlines that I needed to trace with the glue gun. Then after some trial and error with some wax paper, I decided to put the final printout in a picture frame so the glass worked as a barrier between the glue and the paper and it actually worked really well. Once they were finished and dry, I used scissors to kind of clean up the edges a little bit because it's hot glue. I made sure to leave little holes in the design so I would have a place to sew the wing to the hat. And this is what they looked like when they were on the hat. I did realize after my initial try on though that I wanted to make something to put inside of the hat to make it a little sturdier. So I made this circle cardboard coliseum type deal that actually worked really well. So that was that. Which, yeah, I some projects are messier than others and this was a mess. That paint spill actually was something that happened earlier this year and it was traumatic. Don't worry. Okay, okay. it's gonna be fine. But I will clean up later because I am finally done and I can take my final photos. I decided to try and recreate the makeup that's in the movie and all I did basically was rub some blue eyeshadow on my eyebrows and on the bridge of my nose and that's pretty much all that I did. Then I set up my green screen and ta-da! <laughs> The only thing that I'm really unhappy about with the way this turned out is that I didn't use neoprene because I didn't want to spend over $20 a yard. And because I didn't do that, it doesn't have the same shine that the costume does, which I feel like is really missing from this. But overall, I'm really happy with it and I just had fun making it. So sometimes that's really all you can ask for, right? Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like or subscribe or comment or whatever you can do to support. It really means a lot to me. Thanks again. Bye.